a nation at war with Hamas, which controls the Gaza Strip. More than 1,100 people have been killed on both the sides since the war broke out on Saturday. That is, when Hamas rained thousands of rockets on Israel in a surprise pre-dawn attack from Gaza. In the latest, Israeli forces said that they hit over 500 targets in Gaza overnight, which they say severely degrading the capabilities of the Hamas group. The massive retaliatory strikes came in even as Israeli leaders warned of a long and a difficult war ahead. The Israeli military has also amassed 100,000 reserve troops near Gaza. The troops say that they will make sure that Hamas will not be able to govern the Gaza Strip, hinting at a possible full-blown invasion of the Gaza Strip. Now this comes as Israelis were hunting down the last Palestinian fighters who had infiltrated southern Israel. Hamas, on the other hand, has criticized the U.S. for sending a naval strike group near Israeli waters, calling it an act of aggression against the people of Palestine. And U.S. President Joe Biden has ordered U.S. warships, including an aircraft carrier, to move closer to Israel in a show of support, while also sending fresh military aid. Israeli authorities have confirmed 700 deaths including at least 260 bodies that have been recovered from a music festival site. On the other hand, Gaza officials reported at least 413 deaths. Now, multiple foreign nationals have also been reported dead. Ten Nepali students have been killed. The Thailand government says that 12 of its citizens have been killed in Israel, along with citizens of France, Cambodia, Thailand, Ukraine and the UK. Well, an unspecified number of Americans have also been killed. Mexico stated that at least two of its citizens are thought to have been captured. The Hamas militants launched a multi-pronged attack on Israel from air, land and sea on Saturday, which we've been closely tracking here on Vion. Well, the fighters left a trail of dead bodies on Israeli streets as they roamed at will, killing and taking hostages. With an eye on bargains, over 100 Israelis have been taken hostages by the militants. Many in Gaza celebrated the surprise attack on Israel, while Tel Aviv promised mighty vengeance. Israel also came under attack from the north. Hezbollah, a powerful armed party backed by Iran, said that it had launched guided rockets and artillery onto three posts in the Shaba farms in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Regrettably, history for some media and politicians start when Israelis are killed. Our people have endured one deadly year after another. We chose the peaceful path to achieve our rights, but Israel continued using blunt force against Palestinian lives and Palestinian rights. Israel cannot wage a full-scale war on a nation, its people, its land, its holy sites, and expect peace in exchange. Well, New Delhi, along with many Western capitals, dubbed Hamas actions as a terrorist attack. Meanwhile, Israel's foes, including Iran, have hailed the militant group. Meanwhile, anti-Israel demonstrations have fled in Iraq, Pakistan, Turkey and some other nations. یک جلوه ای از مقاومت و ایستادگی در مقابل رژیم پوشالی صهیونیستی که حقیقتاً این پیروزی رو باید به مردم فلسطین، به مجاهدین فلسطینی، به همه گروه های فلسطینی و به امت اسلامی تبریک گفت. The October 8 strike came half a century after the outbreak of the 1973 Yom Kippur War in Israel. Experts are flagging intelligence gaps which undermined what was thought to be an aggressive and successful layered approach towards Gaza by Israel.
And for more on this, uh, we have with us Dr. Abner Cohen. He is a professor of non-proliferation and terrorism studies program at the Moodlebury Institute of International Studies at Montreal. Welcome to the show, Professor. Thank you. Professor, Good these are unprecedented times. Critical analysis of the war is happening at real time. Uh, my question to you is this, uh, Professor, whether this is a colossal failure of both the U.S. intelligence and Israel's Mossad intelligence agency, which is uh, touted to be one of the best in the world? No question. It's a colossal blunder, failure of in in Israeli intelligence, uh, in particular, the Israeli military intelligence, tactical and strategic intelligence. Uh, it's a failure of all three elements in the Israeli intelligence services, the Mossad, which probably not the highest responsibility for that, but the military intelligence as well as the uh, Israeli domestic services, which are domestic intelligence services, which are in charge actually for collections in the Gaza Strip. It's stunning. It's also operational failure. It's also a strategic failure. Uh, and there's still a great deal of uh, open questions how it happened, how it could happen. Uh, one thing is clear. This is even worse, you know, symbolically and perhaps even politically, it happened in a most symbolic way, October 7th. October 7th, 50 years ago, 1950, 1973, was the worst day of the Yom Kippur War. This was perhaps the only day that there was some thinking that Israel might even use nuclear weapons. Um, the level and the extent of intelligence failure and operational and military uh, intelligence this time was even worse. Right. At that time, in 1973, uh, it was cardinal failures of some individuals who, in an arrogant way, misled the entire system. This time, it's a mistake of the entire system. It's a failure of the entire system. And it will take time and thinking, but the questions are already being asked how it could happen. Right, Professor Cohen, you do speak of how this was a colossal failure on Mossad's part, Israel's intelligence agency, but also shed some light on whether this was a failure from the U.S. intelligence side as well. Well, the people who have the highest stake on this matter is are Israelis, not Americans. So theoretically, it may be also a failure of U.S. intelligence, but the people who are directly in charge and directly relevant are the Israelis. And therefore, I mean, they were paying in price, human price. Right. Um, so, so it's much more an Israeli failure. Uh, it's right, Professor Cohen. Um, just, also, just to give you a sense of the dimension. Absolutely. Uh, so far, Israel, there are confirmed at least 700 casualties dead right. and close to 3,000 of wounded. It's very likely that the final number will be over a thousand dead. A thousand dead in Israeli terms. Unlike, you know, if you compare it proportionally to the United States, it's like five times, five to six times what happened in the U.S. Hmm. on September 11th. Right, Professor Cohen. Also, shed some light on how this war between Israel and Hamas militants, well, how that could change the political fate of Netanyahu and even Biden. It's very difficult to, 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 to speculate. Um, Israel officially declared that it finds itself in war. Right. Uh, the operation that has been taking place since then, it's only just tiny bit more than 48 hours, it's about 51 hours after the beginning of all that, mm. were various bombardment bombing of uh, various targets, many targets uh, in Gaza, but it's still, it's still much less than what the Israeli Air Force could do in full power. The Israeli Air Force is not in full power yet. Israel just started to mobilize uh, quite several divisions of the of reserves. 
and uh, it's unclear what and how Israel would wage the um, the officially the official uh, objective would be to eradicate the military capabilities of the Hamas. How to do it? It's open questions. It's yeah. much more complicated when you have about 150 or so of essentially hostages. Uh, many of them are civilians, uh, including women, children, and some old people, some even with dementia. How, how do you do that? It's, it's, it's a real challenge. And, you know, it creates almost a contradiction between, on the one hand, the need to punish in a severe way, in a visible way, and very fast the Hamas, which Israel could do. It would be costly, but Israel could do. But also the fact that Israel has all these human hostages there, mm. how to do it together. It's a big, big dilemma that every Israeli leader this Absolutely, time it's... Uh, just a follow-up to that point that you made there. Around 100 Israelis have been taken hostage by the militant over. group Hamas. Over 100. Over. Right. Yeah. Will that hamper Israel's retaliatory strikes, retaliation that it's planning to do? Obviously, I don't have privy to Israeli military plans if they already made out and clear. But definitely puts some very serious restrictions how to conduct uh, the war. Uh, there are already people who said that Israel first must to mm. take care of those hostages, possibly by way of putting a very clear, very tangible threats. Some people right. say that uh, Israel suggests that Israel should put a full siege, a full and firm siege of the Gaza to shut down power, to shut down water, to shut down everything. Uh, until they are ready to return those hostages and to make some kind of exchange. Uh, it's definitely put restrictions and a great deal of moral and political dilemmas on the Israeli leadership, which is already involved with, with um, domestic crisis of its own. I mean, Benjamin yeah. Netanyahu has a tiny little majority in the Israeli Knesset, mm. and at the same time, he is a leader that currently the majority of the population does not does mm. not give him confidence, uh, question his ability to lead, and he is in a very uh, serious political uh, uh, position okay. in Israel itself. Right, Professor Cohen. Thanks very much for joining us and Beyond and sharing your insights with You're us welcome. on this. We'll of course be tracking this very closely right here on Beyond. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you.